His body was taken from this mausoleum, hanged upside down in a space between the rafters and roof of the cathedral. And I'll just show you the cathedral. Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Today we are in Limerick City and this is the beautiful St. Mary's Cathedral. It is one of the oldest buildings here in Limerick, originally the Royal Palace for the Kings of Tomond. It was gifted to the church in 1168 by Donal Moore O'Brien, King of Munster. If you want to see inside St. Mary's Cathedral, stay tuned till the end of the video. You can see a beautiful door. And they say that this is the original door to the entrance of the palace here. So this is the side of the cathedral here. It's absolutely gorgeous. So we're standing in the graveyard and we have a number of interesting mausoleums or vaults and uh, some interesting graves as well. A small little grave there with a, an iron rail around it. You see a lot of these Celtic crosses here. So our first mausoleum or vault is this one. And it's a quite an unusual design almost like pyramid style until it gets to the the roof and then it's just flat but we have this little black door and it says above the door erected to the memory of thomas miles and thomas miles was a merchant and it was erected by his affectionate wife sarah miles in 1874 So unfortunately, this graveyard has had um, some problems with vandalizing and unfortunately um, drug use as well. So we're just having a, a little look in. You can see the red brick inside there. I'm not sure whether we'll see anything else really. Just like a red brick design all in there so i'm presuming that sarah is buried there as well it's a huge vault for one person so along the way we have some tomb slabs on the the ground as well this is william elder and william as it says here died shortly after birth the 29th of january 1961. so quite a sad grave to read Erected by Agnes O'Brien in loving remembrance of her husband, Charles Robert Bryan, MD, Deputy Inspector General, RN, who died in Limerick on the 26th of January, 1877, aged 69. He did justly, loved, mercy, and walked humbly with his God. And you can see how well preserved the writing is on this one. So there's a grave here as well and it's quite sad. It's known as the Protestant Orphan Grave, dating from the 17th century. This plain burial plot contains the anonymous remains of children and young people. It bears a quotation from Matthew 1814. Even so, it is not the will of your father, which is in heaven, that one of these little ones should perish. Beautiful words there. And uh, it actually says on the slab, 
the burial place of the children of the Limerick Protestant Orphanage. So one of the sadder graves here. So you can see most of the headstones actually look the same. They all have that kind of grey colouring to them. This one, unfortunately, has broken. To the memory of William Clayton, 1882 there. And then the base of it is, is just there. George Bernard Clayton, his infant son, who died 1877, aged something months. It's hidden there by the top of the, the grave itself. So as I said, they have had vandalism carried out here. It also seems to have been a place where, unfortunately, drug users have um, been here at night time and have left their uh, paraphernalia behind, if you know what I mean. Um, so there is actually a lot of CCTV around here. You can see the flashing light of it there. And we have more just on the back wall there. So we are being watched. So if we come down the steps, <clears throat> this is the Barrington Vault. So it's um, for a local a Limerick, prominent Limerick family, uh, Joseph Barrington, became a free man of Limerick City and was created first baronet of Barring Barrington in 1831. That's his, I would call it a mausoleum, I suppose. And this one is huge. I'm going to stand back a little bit and see if we can get it in to the shot. So beautiful vault. We will try and take a little look inside. And actually right beside the Barrington vault, we have the Sexton vault. And you can see just there on the door, 1753, above the door, we have a dragon, and I believe that's a pelican. So beautiful designs. The Sexton family vault was uh, dating from 1753 and is the resting place of the eminent Sexton family, descendants of Edmund Sexton, author and mayor of Limerick, and a friend and confidant of King Henry VIII. And it just describes there the decorations or the carvings are like a monster, which symbolizes the conflicts of life, and a pelican feeding her young with the blood from her breast. And they're both symbolic of Christ's sacrifice for humankind and of resurrection. Now, Edmund, who lies in here, I'm going to tell you um, a very strange story. Now, there were men, merchants and landowners, but Edmund Sexton became a prosperous and controversial figure. He grew increasingly unpopular with the people of Lemrick. 
He was accused of mismanagement of re uh, revenue and Edmund was undoubtedly an opportunist and willing to consort with whoever was most likely to aid his advancement. Now, it's unclear if Edmund's religious beliefs or deceitful nature were responsible for his unpopularity. Uh, but sometime after his death, and this is the interesting part, his body was taken from this mausoleum, hanged upside down in a space between the rafters and roof of the cathedral. And I'll just show you the cathedral. And there's possibly um, a ritualistic element as his right hand was removed and relayed in the mausoleum. Now, his body wasn't discovered for a number of years after it happened, when a thief was actually caught after seeking refuge in the roof. And I presume that they did return the body then to the Sexton Mausoleum or the Sexton Vault. But a very, very strange story, and they are not sure why it happened or, you know, really who did it. But it is extremely interesting. His body taken, hanged in the roof of this cathedral, his right hand taken, decapitated from his arm, placed back in the vault. And then, as I say, a number of years later, he was discovered by a thief. So it may not have been discovered for much longer, only that this thief was seeking refuge in the, the roof of this cathedral. So quite an interesting story. So that's the Sexton Vault and Edmund Sexton himself. So I'm just going to show you guys, actually, this is really, really beautifully done. Now, there was a load of restoration done. You can see these beautiful, like cobbled pathways, and these would have been original. Gosh, there's a little door even here. Look at this. Is this a vault? Van der... Van der Keist. Keist. Whoa. Another Jeez, vault, just huh? in the wall, like. Is there any... There's no inscription. No. I wasn't expecting to see that. It's like the walls have history, don't they? So it must be a vault. I don't know. When we go up to the top, the mass is on at the moment, but when we go up to the top, we'll go up to the corner just here and see what way it is. Is it part of this wall that's here? But if I turn around, this is another mausoleum. Now, this is Boyd, the mausoleum for the Boyd family. Just a beautiful door there. You can see all the cobwebs up. Years of cobwebs. I always have to knock. Um, there's an inscription here and we can see the, the family crest. But for Thomas Boyd Esquire, 44 years resident in this city, died the 15th, 15th day of June, 1839, aged 82. But the inscription I'm going to show you now in a moment is of... Um, a young woman. She was only 29 when she passed away. It's like a Tudor style door. It is actually, yeah. Well, actually it is, yeah. It almost looks like it's medieval really, doesn't it? It's a fantastic mausoleum. But this lady was 29 only when she passed away and she left behind six children. So her husband actually erected this mausoleum for her. Now the inscription is up there. And I'm going to see if I can read it. This mausoleum was erected by James Butler Boyd Esquire in the city of Limerick as a tribute of Ricard to perpetuate the memory of the departed Wirt of Mary, his beloved and affectionate wife, who in the prime of life after a few hours illness fell asleep in Jesus on the 24th day of April 1842 in the 27th year of her age, so she was only 27, I thought actually she was a little bit older, leaving her afflicted husband inconsolable at the demise of the one of the most virtuous and 
amable of wives and six young children to deplore the loss of the best of parents. Having lived a life, she died the debt of the righteous and her end was peace. Daughter of Henry Collis Esquire, nine years high sheriff in this city. So it's quite a sad um, inscription to read and he tells you everything about his wife Mary, Mary Boyd. So she was 27 when she died, but she left behind six uh, children. Now it's a huge mausoleum, isn't it? It looks like it's connected to the wall. It does look like it's connected to the wall, but that wall kind of goes all the way around, so I'm presuming it's not part of it. So mass is going on at the moment, but I, there's a couple of other tombstones and graves I want to actually show you so we're going to turn around here now during we were talking to some locals and during um, I can't remember the year was it in the 80s they were fixing the church and they were putting in um, underground heating and of course they had to lift the ground to do that and they found a number of skeletons so the skeletons were taken and examined they don't know who they were but she said there is um, a grave here where they were reinterred somewhere close to this amazing sculpture now this is King Donal Moore O'Brien and you remember at the start I said it was gifted. He actually uh, gifted this site to the church in 1168. It was sculpted by Will Fogarty in 2020. And that is amazing. It's all carved out of a tree. Absolutely gifted craftsman. So this is our King Donal Moore O'Brien. So, she did say it was a large grave, so I'm hoping we'll find it. And she did say it was near the king's sculpted uh, statue. So this is uh, the resting place of Emily Sharman, originally buried in 1858. Emily's remains were disturbed during the restoration work in 2012 and reinterred in a newer grave along with older remains also found. So this is actually the grave that this lady was talking about. So anybody that they found underneath when they put in, uh, when they were restoring the church, as I said, they put in underground heating. So anybody they found, they relocated here. But obviously they were able to... Um, no, Emily Sharman, because her name is there. What does it say here? The resting place of the... Can I just read it again? The resting place of re-interred bones uncovered during the Excavate. internal excavations of St. Mary's Cathedral during 1997. So it wasn't the 80s like I thought it was, so 1997. Just give you a look again at St. Mary's Cathedral. And we are in the very busy city of Limerick. Not far from John's Castle. Not far from John's Castle, yeah. Hopefully we might have a little bit of time left to, to visit. Now we'll try and get back out on the path. There is another interesting grave along here. Well, hopefully we can find it. A royal grave. We were here actually a number of years ago, so hopefully we'll remember it's where. In, in by the wall. I there. think it is in by the wall. Just look at that. 
cathedral. Now, so this is the final resting place of Prince Milo Pedrovich of Montenegro, following defeat of the army of Montenegro by the Austro-Hungarian Empire, the Pedrovich royal family were deposed. Some members of the family settled in France, while others, including Prince Milo, came to Ireland. Prince Milo died here in Barrington's Hospital in 1978, and his request was to be buried privately in the cathedral grounds. So Milo, Prince of Montenegro, born 1889 and died in 1978 and this is his grave so very very interesting simple grave isn't it? it's a For very a simple grave a prince yeah when when you think about it it's, it's royalty but maybe he didn't have uh, much family left if his request was to be buried privately Oh yeah, so we've got to, how do we get up? Up this way and around, is it to the right? Yeah, over to the right there. Oh no, we can't get that way. Um, there must be a way in. See, that's locked there. No admittance. Why is that? So this is locked. By order of the Dean, it says. Whoa. Some chest sounds in there. Beautiful. Yeah, so it says, no admittance by order of the Dean. I think there's a lot of reverence buried in there. So. It looks like it probably is. That's a pity. So I don't know how we get up to the other area. I'd say it's probably locked for safety. There's a lot of debris and stones. There, yeah. So we can't get up that way at all. And there was no way up from the other side, was there? No, it's just that door, the vault. But I mean, it has to be something. Right, I'll switch this back on in a second if we can find a way in. So Grave Visitations has just pointed this out. The kiss of the sun for pardon, the song of the bird for mirth. One is nearer God's heart in a garden than any place else on earth. In fond memory of Katie Sis Smith, 1897 to 1995, who has a labour of great love for this cathedral at the age of 97 still tended this flower bed having done so for more than 50 years oh that is that's beautiful isn't it i'm glad that they have remembered her so she would have tended all of this area even at 97 quite amazing well that's a mystery that's the vault there, but no, hold on. Here. Can you? There's steps yeah. here. Hold on. I bet it's. I'd say it's locked here as well. Um, oh yeah, it's locked as well. You can see a name on the back. The person, the Perry, is this Oh, oh Lord, I'd love to get in there. That looks amazing. There. There's a vault there as well. It says, "Oh, look at the." It says the Perry family vault, and we are once again <laughs> being watched by CCTV. That is a pity. Now I'd like to have gone in there. It looks like amazing graves in there. It's 
especially those tombs but i do see that some of the area is it's like it's sinking so maybe it's just unstable and it's for uh what would you call it for safety reasons maybe but it's a pity that's the door it's cool at the bottom. yeah i wasn't expecting to see i thought the entrance would actually be the other side I did too, actually, yeah. So that's the entrance. I wonder if I put my phone up on the gimbal and have a, a nosy that way. So I don't know whether you can see anything. It's just a flat roof. Isn't it? Yeah, maybe. But as you can see there, the lights are flashing on the CCTV. So we're always being watched in this graveyard. And I mean, I suppose they've had to do that because of what we were told. Like Big Brother here. This is a bit like Big Brother, isn't it? I don't know what that door's for, but I don't think it's anything like a vault or anything. There's no name on it or anything. So very interesting vaults. The Sexton family vault, very, very interesting. The Barrington vault. And then the Boyd family. So we have a few people coming up now to, to visit. But the cathedral itself is absolutely stunning. So just at the, the back wall, we have these interesting tombs. Till the day dawn and the shadows flee away. It says 1913, but he was Dean of Limerick for eight years. Um, and I think Henry, son of William Smith O'Brien has wrote, and that's some really, really beautiful designs on it. Obviously the family crest is there and one beside it then as well. It says born September 1844, died April, <coughs> excuse me, April 1917. Beautiful. And it says Robert, son of William Smith on this one. Uh, Lucia Elizabeth O'Brien, aged just two years and ten months, the little white cross. And then underneath Lucia's name, we have Una Charlotte O'Brien, died September 27, 1932, aged just 13, just there on that white cross. Very, very sad. Beside her then is the very reverend um, Richard O'Brien, the son of the very reverend uh, Lucius H. O'Brien. So possibly his children there, his wife is there as well. Then we have all these tombs here and then these pillars possibly original so this is known as the exchange wall dating from 1673 and it was the center of commercial life in the city so it would have been like a meeting meeting rooms would have been in there or behind there so original pillars and you can see the arches in the wall itself and then the CCTV but that's quite amazing to see those beautiful the stone is gorgeous A very, very interesting St. Mary's Cathedral and we were lucky we got to go inside 
and listen to some of the choir practice just before mass. Absolutely amazing. Just in the wall here we have a little angel, little cherub. This stone bearing the croaker arms was found in the cathedral grounds. And what's on that is it looks like three birds there. And it says the croaker arms. So this was found in the cathedral, I suppose, during restoration. We have an old one there on the, on the ground. Seventeen sixty-two, aged fifty-two, Francis Reno, Reno died twenty-second. Not sure of the date or of the month. I should say seventeen fifty-five, aged three years old. Oh, very sad. So guys, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the push notification bell to all and that will let you know when I upload next. But for now, guys, take care. God bless. And I'll talk to you all again soon.